Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Turnkey Revolution webinar with Chris Claudier. I'm Courtney Fisher, Associate Director at, of Marketing at McGraw-Hill. I'd like to start with a brief introduction of our author and his new book, The Turnkey Revolution. With over 15 years of experience in turnkey real estate, Chris and his family are one of the top turnkey providers in the country. Through Memphis Invest, they've purchased over 4,700 properties, managed 600 million in capital, and helped over 1,800 turnkey real estate investors succeed. Chris serves as the external voice for the company, helping potential investors define their purpose and educating peer companies on best practices. His new book, The Turnkey Revolution, offers expert advice on the best ways to purchase, renovate, and manage rental properties safely, easily, and profitably. You'll find everything you need to take advantage of in today's real estate revolution, including case studies, investment strategies, and tricks of the trade that will save you time and money as you grow your portfolio. Before I pass things off to Chris, I'd like to encourage you to submit questions into the Q&A section of your screen throughout the session. We'll dedicate the last few minutes of the webinar to answering those. And with that, here's Chris. Thank you very much, Nora, and welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, taking the time to join us today on, on this webinar for my new book that I am obviously very proud of, very excited to, to write. It actually was a, was a years long process and something that took me a, a long time to kind of compile my, my thoughts and my expertise and, and I guess bring to the, the final fruition, which is what you see in this book. I'm going to adjust my screen real quick to make this a little easier for everyone to see me and make me feel a little more comfortable not looking down. So look, I am, I'm very excited. I want to share with you, um, kind of the, my experience and what I know about real estate and some of my background with my family and uh, give some insight into the book itself because it was such a joy to write. And I'm so proud of actually having been able to, to put it out with such a phenomenal company like McGraw Hill. The, uh, the turnkey revolution was something that really, you know, it started, it, it feels to many observers that it started within the last maybe, you know, four or five, six years when turnkey really, really caught on within the public space. There's a lot of discussion about how to buy turnkey real estate on public forums. There's even a lot of, we won't call it misinformation, but we'll call it, you know, misunderstandings about exactly what does it mean to, to buy real estate through a turnkey process? What does it mean to do business with a quality turnkey company? And then how does an investor really know that they, they've done well, that they are succeeding in building a truly powerful portfolio um, of turnkey real estate properties. And so really that, that was the, the thrust of the book is how can I get this across to um, my readers that this is what it means to buy turnkey real estate. This is what it means to be successful. And here are the things that you want to avoid. So I set out to write the turnkey revolution. I documented a little bit about my family's background and our history, but more than anything, I really tried to, to capture some of my own experiences of dealing with thousands of turnkey real estate investors, but also highlight, you know, six to eight of true actual stories. So the, the actual experiences of the investors to kind of, you know, highlight each of the chapters. As I was, you know, considering this webinar, I knew that I could not go through the whole book. I knew that it's such a it's such a vast topic that there's there's so many different things we could talk about with it. What I decided to do was maybe maybe touch on on some real we won't call them basics we will call it the the essentials. One of the the essentials being just defining what what is turnkey real estate in the first place. It's a it's a term that a lot of investors that are not familiar with the single family space they may not really know exactly what it means. The phrase in itself kind of, I guess, is, is maybe self-explanatory. Turnkey means that things are maybe done for you. Um, there is a lot of heavy lifting uh, that already takes place when you're investing in turnkey real estate. So let me, let me just define it straight out exactly what turnkey real estate is. Turnkey real estate uh, and investing in turnkey real estate is when an investor works with a company that has already identified a quality investment property, a single family home. That's really what we're talking about here, single family home investing. So someone has identified this property and they have purchased it. 
they have done a complete renovation, eliminating all deferred maintenance so that the property is ready and available to perform it at peak condition. They take that property and then they place a long-term resident into it, a renter that is going to provide a, a rental income for a future investor. Now that property is a performing asset. You've got a piece of property that you can purchase outright. You can even place a loan against it if you want to. And it's got a renter in it that's going to pay a monthly income. That is a turnkey property. And now an investor steps in and purchases that property. Once it's been completely renovated, once it's been 100% ready to go for the investor, there's the investor doesn't have to find the property. The investor doesn't have to worry about the renovation. The investor doesn't have to put any of their money into the deal to to find the property or to renovate it. Everything has already been done for them, hence the name turnkey. They're ready to the, the day they buy it, they can step in, own that property, get started um, in, in participating in the, in the turnkey economy. They, they now have the ability to own a, a property and earn an income from it. That's what turnkey is. And the reason why it has really flourished is that, especially after the housing crisis, as housing you know, you begin to see markets return to normal um, and even some excel beyond their, their previous pricing. A lot of investors found that that they had two problems. One was my market is too expensive. There's there's too much going on here. The prices are too high. My rent to value ratios are off. So I can't buy a property at a low enough price to earn enough rent to make money in between. So that was one issue. The second issue, and it is probably the one that that I and my family's company really learned to solve for investors first was there's a there's a big learning curve with real estate. You know, we watch all the, the real estate shows on TV today. It's such a popular topic. Everybody, not everyone, but you you, you understand there's so many people out there that, that realize that investing in real estate is a great way to get ahead. It is um, has always been considered a excellent hedge against inflation, a great way to acquire assets and have renters in there and, and earn income off your, off your asset that somebody else is, is you know, paying you on a monthly basis. There's just been a lot of interest in it. Now you have cable channels that every show on the, on the channel is real estate related. Everything in these tight little 30 minute segments looks easy and fun and sometimes uh, profitable. Sometimes you get to see all the, the, the back end fighting. And so it's, it's brought this level of, of inquiry into real estate. People are just really excited about it. They want to know, what is this? How do we get started? But I don't have time. In today's, you know, the, today's world, there's so much going on. There's so much that is demanding our time. I don't know about everyone on the call here today, but I'm a parent. I have five children and I have a lot going on. And I don't exactly have time to go and learn something new. I may not have time to go and, and figure out how to find good properties and how to renovate them properly. So with time being an issue and time being so valuable for everyone, we really sought to figure out what's the easiest way to solve that problem, to pique people's interest in real estate without their time. If there was a way that you could buy a property that was already completed, that already had everything done, that already had a, a resident occupying the property, paying rent on a monthly basis, then a lot of the questions were answered. And so that's where turnkey real estate comes in, that it's a way to own real estate without having to put the time in. You don't have to give up your time, which is you know such a, such a precious commodity to us today, but yet you can still own real estate whether your market is priced too high or not. Because turnkey real estate, if someone else has already identified it and someone else has already done the renovation and it's high quality and someone else has already placed a resident, then really all you're doing is buying an asset at that point. You're buying into someone else's expertise. If you can find the right expert at the right price, you can make money. That's the point of the book. Now, I'm gonna go through just some quick steps that I'll do lay out in the book. Again, like I said, I can't go through all of it. But I want you to understand that 
that one of the things that sets back investors and and has probably hurt more investors uh, than any other single thing I can think of is having a, a, a failure to set a vision, failure to set a reason. Some some coaches, I would call it, and some uh, business coaches or uh, mentors would would encourage you, if you're a listener on here, that to come up with your why. What is the reason you want to do this? I, I tend to say that's a little you know out there. I say just set your vision. And the vision is, what am I hoping to accomplish from investing in real estate in the first place? Is there something in particular I want to get out of this? And then so that I'm able to, you know, kind of construct a plan around this, is there a number of houses I need to own or I would like to own in order to get my vision? And for me, it was simple. Uh, when I first got started in real estate, I had one son and the first house I bought, I often tell people wasn't, uh, 1237 Rose, I think it was Rose Boulevard, but instead it was Grayson's College Fund. I Grayson, my oldest son, who was three at the time, I put a 15 year note against the first house I ever bought turnkey. And I decided that this, my reasoning for doing this was I wanted to create a college fund for my son. A 15 year note on an investment property would be paid off by the time he was 18. Now I knew at that point it's producing an income for me monthly. And it also uh, has great value. And so when it's been completely paid off and I owe no money against it, I've got an asset producing a, you know, a roughly a thousand dollars in rent a month. I have the ability to pay his college fund. And rather than, you know, stuffing money away and scrolling money away into a savings account every month, I decided to buy a piece of property instead. That was my vision. I sat down and said, I want to have a property for every child I have, and at the point I didn't know how many I was going to have, I certainly didn't realize I was going to have five, but I thought, you know, what greater gift could I have than to have something paid off and be able to use that to pay for their college? The next house I bought, I said, you know, this is a house that I might be able to pay for their wedding or better yet, give as a gift to my child later on, you know, when they're ready to get married or, or at some at some point in their life and I want to give them something of real value and it's not money, it's a house fully paid off. It's an asset, something for them to, to build their nest egg on. And so every time I would go to look at a property or think about buying a property, I was always thinking that there was a reason behind it. It wasn't because I wanted more houses. It wasn't because I wanted more money. It, there was a, always a reason to buy that house. That was always part of my vision. I encourage all the readers, and that's why the first part of this is, before you ever buy real estate, and really before you ever get into any investment, if you don't know why you're doing it, then how will you ever know if you've succeeded? How will you know if you're on the right path to succeed? And you won't. You won't know when you need to make adjustments. You won't know when something may be right or wrong. So I encourage all the readers, that's right, right up front in the very part of the, the first part of the book, is to set your vision, to set it properly. I even go as deep as, as creating what you would call your perfect day. And if that no matter what that perfect day looks like in the book, you know, what I'm trying to get the reader to do and what I want everyone here to understand is that it's about knowing why you're moving forward. What's the reasoning that you have that you want to build real estate? Why buy turnkey real estate? Why not buy uh, a REIT? Why not buy stocks? Why not just put your money into a savings account? I mean, what's the, what's the real value and the reasons you're getting out of buying real estate? And so let me tell you, it'll save a lot of time and headache. That's one of the reasons why, why I tell so many people that, the, that I enjoyed writing the book so much because I probably, I've helped as many investors go in a different direction as I have actually buying turnkey real estate. And it's through understanding turnkey real estate, understanding how powerful it can be, but it has to fit your vision. And if it doesn't, I want to help you move in the other direction. So it's really, really powerful. Early part of the book is about setting your vision. From there, I really get into the basics of buying. And I want you to understand that uh, every once in a while, I'm going to tell you during the webinar to write something down. This is important. You, you're definitely going to want to write this down. Um, the house is the last thing that you need to think about when you're buying single family homes through the turnkey real estate process. Um, because it's the, it's the thing that matters probably the lowest when you stack up what market do I want to invest in? 
Am I willing and able to go outside of my own market and go far from home? If I do, how do I know what's a good market or not? And then if I find a good market, how do I find a good team? More to the point, then if you find a good market but can't find a good team, should I still invest there? So the basics are this. You always start with the market first. If as an investor, you're willing to go far from home, if you're willing to invest outside of where you live, there are ways to do it safely. There are ways to do it correctly. One of those ways and, and the reasoning behind investing out of area is never because a family member was good at it or your boss or your neighbor or someone else says, hey, you need to buy some real estate and you should buy it over in um, New Jersey or Illinois or Montana or Tennessee or wherever. That's never a good reason to buy. Um, because someone else is being successful is not good enough for you as an investor to go and buy real estate somewhere else. There has to be a little more to it. That's a good starting point, but let's, let's make sure there's more to it. If you're, if you're able to say, look, I can buy anywhere. If I find the right team and I know the, the steps to take and how to make this process successful, then it doesn't matter if it's 50 miles away, 500 miles away, or 2,000 miles away across the country. I can buy real estate anywhere. And when you, when you wrap your mind around that and say, I'm comfortable with the right steps, then it really opens up the entire country. Now, it doesn't matter why you choose a market. It can be because your college roommate lives there and says the real estate's really cheap and you should buy. Okay, that's a good reason to go and explore the market. What you're looking for, write this down, guys, is you want a, a growing population. At a minimum, it needs to be stable. You want a diverse industry, uh, a diverse number of industries that are providing jobs in that market. So you're really looking to avoid markets that have just one industry providing pretty much all of the jobs. An example of that may be some uh, rust belt markets in the, you know, back in the, the mid 2000s were heavily, heavily, heavily built on the auto industry. And we all know what happened with the, with the economic crisis that led to a, a drop in the number of autos being sold, led into a lot of plants closing, led to a lot of jobs lost, and led to some areas, some cities and towns really, really struggling. And in my opinion, those are markets that at that time you would have wanted to avoid as an investor because they were all built around just one industry. Now, I'm not knocking any of them because they, all those markets have done a great job of rebounding and really diversifying um, into other industries. But you need to be aware. Always be aware of what are the industries that are providing jobs in this market. I like to look at, at job data as well on cities. And I want to know is our, you know, what's the net job fluctuation? You know, it's great that a new employer comes in and brings a lot of jobs. But it's not so hot if there were just as many employers leaving or just as many jobs being gone. Now it's, it's really kind of a push. So I want to know that jobs are growing. It's not just new companies coming in, but it's also companies aren't leaving, jobs aren't leaving. There's, there's a growth in jobs, a growth in population. Um, those are, these are real high level and basics. And in the book, I really, really go into detail um, about what you're looking for and ways to dig deep into a market, especially using um, local bloggers. Local bloggers are phenomenal to give you the insight on a market, both good and bad. They're going to give you the real um, down and dirty on how a market looks. So for me, turnkey real estate and the basics mean that you have to, you have to identify markets that you want to explore. You don't go visit them. Not yet. There's no reason. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know what you're looking for. Why, why waste a trip to a market if you don't know what you're looking for yet? So just research it. Is it a good, stable, maybe even growing population? Is there a good, stable job market? Is there a diverse number of industries that are providing jobs? These are basics. Um, do the local bloggers, you know, and look, I even read about the food scene in the market. I want to know that there's new restaurants being opened up and there's this vibrancy in a market, um, in, especially in and around areas that I want to invest. It just makes sense. I want to know what's happening. This research, by the way, I'm talking. 30 minutes on Google, uh, reading some articles, reading uh, trade journals or reading business 
uh, insider magazines. This is that's it. Nothing major. Nothing. Nothing that's gonna that's gonna require days upon days upon days of, of research. This is this is very basic, simple, and you're gonna be able to quickly eliminate markets that you would not want, and you're gonna be able to coalesce around a, a group of markets that you might really like. Secondly, you want to um, research. Once you've once you've kind of researched into those markets, you want to dig a little bit deeper and you want to research into what's driving that market. What's the housing look like in that market? Are housing prices going up? Are they coming down? Is there growth going on? Read about the, you know, what's going on with the local renters. If you're if you're looking to invest in the upper northwest right now, you see a lot of cities are passing some some legislation that is causing a little angst amongst um investor groups, especially amongst the smaller investors that, that are they're trying to build small portfolios and kind of the, the, the challenges that are being presented to them by some cities in the Northwest. You want to know what's, what's going on in the city. Is it good for investors? What's the rental, you know, home price first uh, average rent range? You know, how's it, how's it looking? How are the numbers matching up? Is this a market I can make money in? It's important to know once you you once you determine that this is a market that I like, to dig a little bit deeper, really start reading about the real estate. What's going on with home starts? You know, are they up? Are they down? What's what's really happening here? Um, I think I just think it's it's important that you only identify a couple, two to three markets at the most, to really dig deep into on the housing. You want to you want to read and see what's happening with renters in this area. What's happening with um, investor owners, is this a good market for me to go into based on all this data? Next, when you find markets that make sense to you and you're like, you know what, the, the, the housing starts make sense, the median home price versus median rent, it matches, I can make money in this market. The, the news is certainly not negative towards investors or towards landlords or owners, that type of thing. There's nothing coming out that that scares me away and says this is not a market that I would want to invest and hold real estate long term. Then it's time to, to research and see if there's a company there that provides a full turnkey service. So let me let me stop right here and make sure everyone on the call understands and anyone that may, may watch in the future know this, that a full turnkey service means I'm going to define it again from earlier. I find a company that is physically purchasing every property themselves. They don't need my money as an investor. They are fully capitalized. They find the properties and purchase them themselves. They oversee a complete renovation. They don't need me to send them money in to renovate the property. They have their money. They're fully capitalized. They know how to operate. They renovate that property and they place a resident into it. They don't pass on the property management to someone else and say, I'm going to give you to another third party property management company that'll, that'll manage this property for you. They actually say that I own the management company so that should you as an investor have any issues or any problems or any questions, there's only one call for you to make. You call us as a company and we purchased the property. We did the full renovation on the property and we managed the property. So if there's ever an issue for you as an investor, there's no passing of the buck. I don't tell you to call someone else because they handled the renovation, but or call someone else because they are the manager now. No, it's it's one company that handles everything. You don't have to use their management service, mind you. That's important as well, but it's there as a value added service to you as an investor. A value added service, all under one roof. That's what you're looking for. And there are plenty of, of good companies. There are, there are a ton of companies out there today, but there are, again, not everyone operates the same way. And the word turnkey is a real buzzword today in real estate. There's a lot of people that, that talk about being a turnkey company when in reality, they may need your money on the front end, or they may pass you on to another management company because really all they're doing is finding and flipping the home. So you want to be real careful. You're looking to build a long-term relationship. Don't forget that, that one of the keys to single family investing is that 
this is really unlike some other investments that are available out there. This really should be a long-term investment. This should be something that is built and designed for the long-term game, not, not short, quick hits. This is not get rich quick. Um, this isn't speculative either. This is this type of investing turnkey single family homes. This is absolutely, um, if you follow the right steps, you can make money. There's no guarantees, but you, if you follow the right steps, you should be able to make money in this type of investment over the long term. So you're building a long term relationship with who you're going to do business with. When you're researching companies, one of the one of the key things I tell investors is you want to go through an interview process. And I put it in the book. It's it's in the book. It's got all, uh, not sure how many, I don't recall exactly how many questions it is, but it's, it's 19 or 20 questions that you need to go through with a turnkey company. It's an interview style. If they don't want to be interviewed, they're probably the wrong company. They don't want to give you time to get to know who they are. It's the wrong company. Um, so you want to follow the, the, the process that I've laid out in the book to be able to interview companies in these cities that you've identified that are solid cities to invest in. Okay. And then once you've found a company and you will, it may take time and it may not be the first company you talk to. And as I said, a few minutes ago, you may find a city that you really love, but you cannot find a company that's willing to do everything for you or even already in existence to do it all. If you want to be safe, as safe as you can be, then you don't invest there. If you are willing to take on a little more risk, then and you really like the city, then you, you take that approach. The, the point of the turnkey revolution is to teach you how to reduce your risk as much as possible. And, you know, but, but again, give you the steps and the data and the information you need to make a good decision on how to do that or not do that. Um, so you, you, you begin to research your companies. And I'm going to I'm going to push forward here because I'm going to assume that that you as a listener, you found the company that you're looking for. Well, the, the next thing is to create your plan. This is another one that I tell you is a huge mistake. When I'm asked by investors, when I speak on stage or, or anytime that I give talks, and they want to know what my number one mistake was. Because one of the questions I tell you to ask any turnkey company was, what was your biggest mistake as an investor? And how do you help me avoid it? That is, a, that is a powerful, powerful question to ask someone who's going to be providing service to you. So what I tell people about me when I'm asked this question is, I had a plan and I failed to follow it. I decided that while my plan was good, other people began to, began to kind of feed information into you know, each of my ears and kind of tell me this. And, and before I look up, I have bought four times the number of properties I initially set out to purchase. I only wanted 15. I had 60. That was a major problem for me. It created, now you talk about, um, even though these properties were bought turnkey, I still had an enormous amount of paperwork that I had to deal with. And just because it's turnkey and because someone's doing all the heavy lifting doesn't mean you take your eye off of it. Doesn't mean you stop managing the income of the property. This, you know, at a few properties, it's, it's minor. At 60 properties, it's a whole nother business that I had to manage. And it, it eventually uh, almost sank me as an investor. So I was able to, to battle back from that. But I often tell people that when you make a plan, you don't let anyone else alter your plan. You follow it. If your plan is to buy two properties a year, every year for the next five years in cash flowing markets that meet these, you know, this box of numbers, then that's the plan you follow. And you don't let someone else convince you that this is a great deal that you have to buy immediately. And even though it doesn't fit your plan, it doesn't matter. You can't afford not to do it. That's not your plan. You can't afford to change your plan. So uh, I'm real big on that in the book about talking about how you have to create your plan. You have to follow your plan. You have to have a, a, as I said earlier, your vision is where you're trying to get to. And it's the whole point of buying these turnkey properties is to reach my vision one day. And so I build a plan to get me there. As soon as you change your plan, you might be going off in some other direction and doing something different. So 
creating your plan is very is very um, important. It's very personal. It should take time. You should put a lot of time and effort into it. And then from there, we'll get to um, how to actually execute that plan. And I talk about that a lot, again, in the book. Communication. If you're going to be a good turnkey investor and you pick a good quality company, one of the things that's going to happen is communication back and forth. When the communication stops is when failure enters the picture. I cannot tell you strong enough. I cannot, um, I can't sit on this point enough for you as an investor to understand that you must, you must take care of the communication piece. So you're hiring a company because they're able to find good properties that you would be proud to own. They renovate those properties to a high level that, that you understand is going to make them perform at a stable and constant rate. Consistent rate might be the best way to put that. You're choosing a company because they manage properties in a way that you enjoy and makes sense. I'll give you a, a little tip here to write down. When you're talking about property management with a turnkey company, I used a word there that I think some of you on here have already caught on to. Maybe, maybe y'all didn't, but I used the word resident. And um, through a mastermind, through masterminding and working with uh, some other companies, I actually heard this word being used. And when I sat there and thought about it, I realized that the word resident and the word tenant mean the same thing, but they have a very, very different interpretation, especially when you're hearing it. You know, you hear the word tenant and it it tends to, in my mind anyway, make me think short term. Uh, it makes me think of a renter. And it makes me have a little bit of, you know, not worry, but it, it begins to introduce some, some idea in my mind that, hey, these people are not going to be here very long. They could leave at any time. That's kind of what it, it that's what it invokes in my imagery is is tenant means not stable. Whereas as soon as we introduce the word resident into our team and into our our customers, which were the the renters at the time, as soon as we began to refer to them as residents and we put it everywhere throughout our company, everything is about residents and not renters and tenants, it changed. The, the mood changed, the atmosphere changed. The, you know, today we, in, we have over five year average occupancy of each individual property. And that's not by accident. That is by this very concerted effort to communicate and talk in a way to our residents that makes them feel welcome. Now, to an investor on the backside, when I'm talking about residents, the very first thing they hear is long term stability. That's what I want them to understand. That's what we try and portray. So it's what you're looking for as an investor when you're when you're interviewing management companies. How do they talk about their residents? Are they considered tenants? Do so they call them tenants? And there's inherently there's nothing wrong with that. But if if there's kind of a a write them off attitude, like they just they're coming, they come and go, you know, they're a dime a dozen. This resident leaves or this tenant leaves, I'll find another tenant. And you know, will they will they stay for their full lease? Well, you know, usually no, but sometimes yes. I don't care. I'll just get them out and get a new one in. And, you know, I'm just here to manage a property for you. That's not a good, that's not, in my opinion, that's not the kind of attitude that you want. So you're looking for and paying attention to those little clues. Um, and so someone that is, that's talking in that way and talking about the communication they have with the resident, well, then you know that that communication is going to carry over to you on the other side as an investor. How are they going to communicate with me? I told you earlier that I had 60 houses and the it became almost a second full-time job with all of the um, paperwork I would receive and having to track the rents that I was receiving from my management companies and make sure that everything was going where it was supposed to go. So I had rent come in and I have a payment go out and I have insurance bills and I had tax bills. I want to make sure everything's being taken care of. You have to spend time. You have to devote time to your portfolio. Yes, it's turnkey, but turnkey because they're handling the heavy lifting. You still have work to do on the back end. And part of your work is to speak with and communicate with your management company monthly. 
And if you don't, if you're not looking at your monthly statements, if you're not trying to have communication, and I'm not talking about these emails that never get returned. I'm talking about, you know, on the front end that this management company is going to communicate with me. They are going to proactively work with me to keep my houses occupied, to keep my residents happy. And the only way that's going to happen is if I, as an owner, show interest in this. I am proactive. I'm looking at my statements. I'm calling my management company. If they're calling me, I'm answering the phone. I'm going through the steps of having great communication. It's one of the single biggest downfalls that, that any passive investor has on the backside, but especially turnkey investors, because they think that the word turnkey means everything's just handled for me. And it's everything on the front end, the heavy lifting, the things you have to put time and energy into learning, all that's done. The simple parts, the simple thing of just spending 30 minutes to an hour every month on your portfolio, speaking with your management company, reviewing and making sure they're giving you the right amounts of, of rent every month and that they are not double billing you because those things happen. That's what communication is all about. It is the key to your success. If you're willing to put the time in and communicate back and forth with your management company and consider that when you're trying to find a good turnkey company is how good is their communication going to be, you're moving in the right direction to be successful. And it kind of, you know, as I've spent so much time talking about that, it really brings me to the mistakes to avoid. Um, there are, it's easy to make mistakes in turnkey real estate. It really is. And that's unfortunate. Those mistakes usually come from not spending enough time on the front end researching the market, maybe doing business with a turnkey company because someone else told you they were really good. I will, I will be very direct with you as I always am on, on anything like this. Um, I'm fiercely proud of my family's company. We've been doing this for over 15 years and we are often considered uh, the gold standard that, that many turnkey companies try and learn from. That's a, that's a great responsibility for us. But let me tell you something. Um, there are so many ways today that you as an investor need to watch because in, in, when you're buying turnkey real estate, there's so many little mistakes that can be made along the way that can cost you. There's a lot of of companies today that they talk a very, very good talk and they're very good with the marketing side of it. But you as an investor have to stay, let's, let's call it unemotional, unattached. And even when you're doing business or wanting to do business with my company, you cannot take anything that, that a member of my team or even I say solely on faith. You have to make even us earn the right to do business with you. This is as most investors are investing their life savings or their retirement funds or their kids' college educations, it's the most important thing you could ever invest. So you have to be careful. You can take nothing on faith. You must always do due diligence and dig in. And I tell investors that maybe somewhere down the line, maybe a year or two years down the line, maybe I will have earned the right for you to take something I say on faith. But just because we have a good reputation or just because a lot of people know who we are. We've been around for a long time. None of that matters when it comes to your personal money. You must dig in. You must do your research. You must make sure that everything you're hearing, even from us, is a, in alignment with what you want to do as an investor. That's the only way that, that you can go about this. And I would be uh, a liar if I told you anything else. You, As much as I know that we have this, this fantastic reputation, you still have to, to hold us accountable. You still can take nothing that is said on faith. It's the reason why I wrote the book, because I wanted to get out there to investors and let them know that, um, you know, you, you can be successful. You can invest in anywhere in the world if you want to, but there's so much opportunity right here in the United States. I don't know why somebody would go elsewhere, but for the average investor, for you and I, you can invest in any city in the country. There are so many opportunities. And when you begin to dig in, you'll find the ones that make sense. And when you do your research, you'll, you can find high quality companies that value the long-term relationship. And they understand that 
keeping a resident happy and a property occupied is the number one way to make an investor's experience consistent and high level to get them to keep building their portfolio. When you find companies like that, that's where you want to go. That's who you want to invest with. Um, I'll leave you with this, guys. I, we've been doing this for a very long time. I know all this was said at the very beginning. Um, this is, you know, I, I didn't just write this book because I thought it would be a really cool and interesting thing. I, I've written a blog from Memphis Invest now for almost 10 years. And this book really kind of flowed out of the blog. It, because I would write about my experiences with other investors. I would write about things that mattered to them. And the book became this kind of this passion project of I want to get this message out to as many people as possible. And so that's how this came about. Today, we continue to, to, to practice what we preach. We're, we're all turnkey investors ourselves. We continue to grow as a turnkey uh, company, offering what we feel is the highest level of service we can to other investors. And more than anything, the ability for, for investors to get pointed in the right direction, because if it's not with us, we want to make sure we take care of everyone to, to go the right way. So um, I kind of ended with this. If you haven't already got the book, I would love if you would. It's uh, the turnkey revolution. It's in every uh, it's all, all the major bookstores. It's, it's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble. Um, and so you can buy it online at your, at your neighborhood bookstore. And, and I would I would be honored if anybody. Uh, hear from this today would uh, be interested and want to buy it. And, and you, as always, as I always said, everybody, no matter where I'm at, if ever I can do anything for you, reach out. I'll be happy to help anyone and answer any questions or, or reply back to you if I can. So thank you very much for on this. Nora, I know that, that you may have had some uh, questions uh, from our, our viewers that you want to go through. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much. That was really informational and honest. So I think we all very appreciate that. Um, I also course. just wanted to highlight um, we have Thomas who joined the webinar who actually works with your company. So I just wanted to give him a shout out. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've had a few questions come in. Um, first one, if you have money to invest, would you say that turnkey real estate is more profitable than a college fund? Than a college, one more time? A college fund. So is it more profitable to buy turnkey real estate than to put money into a like a, like a tax, tax shelter college fund? Yes, I think so. Well, look, I, I cannot say 100% that it is or it isn't because I don't know. I'm not familiar with every single college fund out there, but this is what I will tell you that, that the way I view it. I bought my first property as a college property for my son. And round numbers, I paid a little over $100,000 for the property. And it generates around $1,100 a month in rent. But because I was able to finance the property itself, I only had to put it, it cost me about $25,000 total to acquire that $100,000 property. The $1,100 a month in rent that it generates more than covers the property, the taxes, the insurance, and the upkeep. So the way I view that in 15 years time, and that's two years from now, I have a property completely paid off that I didn't pay any additional money. I only paid 25,000 on the front end and I actually made money while owning that property. And I put it on a 15 year note so that when he turned 18, it would be paid off. And at that time, I have a property owned free and clear with a value of roughly 125,000. And I only spent $25,000 15 years ago to get it. I don't know how profitable college funds are but I don't know of anything out there that you can invest in that you can actually leverage like you can in real estate. That's what makes it so unique. And I'm not a big fan, let me be clear, I'm not a big fan of leverage. I'm a big fan of borrowing money. I'm a big fan of borrowing money to acquire properties, but I wanna pay them off fast. So that's why I do low, you know, low terms. But um, in that particular property, I can't think of anything else I could invest in that would be more profitable for that for my kids' college. Thank you. Uh, we have another question. How much disposable income do you recommend someone has before they start investing in turnkey? Well, it's a, that is a, the question is going to be dependent upon where you decide to invest, like which market. Um, but let's use a, let's, I'm a big proponent of buying the nicest property you can get. 
turnkey real estate, really for it to work, you cannot deal in the low end properties because there's not enough demand and there's not enough stability in those properties. Those are best left to an active investor in that city and they can do great. But if you're going to be passive and you want to buy across the country, you really need to buy the, you, you need to buy the best property possible. Let's just, so I'll use an example of a, if you're going to buy an asset, a, a property that's $100,000, you're probably going to need $30,000 to be able to purchase it. And that's because you've got a, a minimum of 20% down payment. You've got closing costs. And then look, I, I call it a, um, you know, a, a kind of like a, a who cares fund um, in the book because expenses are going to come. You cannot spend every dollar you have to acquire a piece of property and then hope one day to build back up some, some, you know, uh, a who cares fund in case something happens. So you have to have a little bit of money set aside. So if you're going to buy a property between 80 and a hundred thousand dollars, which I think that you should, that will buy you a good property in, in even low cost areas. Um, you want to, you want to, have you know about thirty thousand dollars because you need to have something set aside and if you don't have that yet be patient there is there's one thing that i encourage everyone to remember is that you don't have to rush this is this is a strategy and a way of buying homes that has existed since homes were around and that it's going to continue on it's not reliant upon you buying really cheap and making this big score because this isn't get rich quick so it will exist. It'll be there. If you don't have it today, invest in something else to build your capital. And, you know, you can invest in the same opportunity a year, two years, five years from now. It may look a little different. It may be in a different city, but it will exist. And if you're open to investing anywhere, then be patient. Don't rush. Thank you. And we have one last Thank question. You. Is planning an exit strategy part of creating your plan when you're looking to invest? So I don't think that planning the exit strategy necessarily should be because if you're if you're planning to sell and you already know that, hey, look, I'm planning on exiting this house within the next three to five years, then more than likely there's a better strategy somewhere. Yeah, and and because turnkey real estate inherently is going to be more expensive. There's uh, less equity in the deal because you, someone else is purchasing and renovating and putting their capital into the deal. So you don't have to. So they're taking um, some of the equity out of the deal before you get into it. But it's good to think about it. It's good to know that number one, if you're doing business with a good turnkey company, there'll be demand for what they do. And so, Maybe I, maybe I can't, um, maybe I don't want to sell today, but if I had to five years from now, is there demand for the company I'm working for? Is there demand for these properties? Are they in good areas? Those are things that should come into your mind so that if you need to, you can sell. But if you're, if you come into it with the idea of, I, I want to sell and I want to make a big score when I do, I would say turnkey may, is probably not the right avenue. So your exit strategy is more about, um, I say fluidity. Most of my investors, everyone I've dealt with has said, I want to buy this for long term. This is generational wealth. But if there's an opportunity, if something comes up and I need to sell, I want to know that there's the fluidity is there, that I've got a good company behind me. There's good demand for my property and where I'm buying it. I'm not buying an area that has no demand. And if, if I'm making those decisions, then at least an exit strategy exists. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. This was really great. And everyone on the webinar, I want to make sure this is the turnkey revolution. The book is available online and in all bookstores. And we want to thank everyone for joining. Uh, please feel free to reach out to Chris or McGraw-Hill with any questions. And again, we really thank you for joining. Thank you.